Hello again everyone and welcome to today's lesson. So we'll be talking about the energy topic or the energy module of year 11 chemistry and in particular today's lesson will focus on allotropes of carbon. Okay? And today you will learn what an allotrope is so don't fear yet um, we're about to get to that. But first um, I'll try and build some intuition as to what an allotrope is. So as you can see on the left that's coal and on the right is a diamond. Now coal is made of carbon and diamond is also made of carbon, but what we do is we call coal and carbon, uh, coal and diamond, allotropes of carbon. So hopefully now you can sort of see what an allotrope is, but we'll define it now. So an allotrope is just a different form of the same element, so different forms of the same element in the same physical state. So we have different forms of carbon in the diamond or coal or carbon or graphite structure, and but they're both solid, okay? Now, the atoms of the same element are just simply arranged differently. So what makes diamond different to coal is simply how they're arranged in the diamond structure or the coal structure. Now, different structures, of course, mean that they have different properties. So they have different densities, different hardness, different colors. So as you saw from that coal versus diamond picture, you could, of course, see different, different properties. Um, and you know that diamond is very hard and coal is not so hard. Uh, of course you can tell the colour difference from a mile away. So diamonds, let's talk about diamonds first. It's a strong 3D structure. This is a very So here we have a 3D structure and as you can see each carbon is bonded to four other carbons in four directions. So as you can see they're bonded to four separate carbons. Right. Now these carbons are arranged in tetrahedrons and what that does is it creates a very, very strong structure. Now, each of these bonds is not particularly strong. It's just that in order to do anything to this material, you have to break all of the bonds. And because there are so many bonds, um, they, that adds up to a lot of energy. Um, it is the hardest and stiffest natural substance. So we kind of have seen that before. And it's used to coat drills and saws. So we have diamond edged drills and saws, which are considered, you know, top of their range because these things are so hard, these diamond structures. Um, of course, you saw that it was transparent. And one of the main things that we look for in diamonds in terms of jewelry and things like that is how transparent it is. Um, if it's cloudy, then it's not so nice and people will charge less for it, of course. Another cool part of, or interesting part of diamond is that it has a very high thermal conductivity. So heat travels very well through the diamond structure, simply because heat can travel to each atom very, very quickly because of all those bonds. Um, from the electrical conductivity point of view, however, because there are no free electrons, no electrons that are free to move, or any charges in general that are free to move, we have no electrical conductivity. So it's essentially a very good electrical insulator. Graphite. So this is the stuff we see in pencils um, that we write with. So it has a very high melting and boiling point and good electrical conductivity. Okay, so the reason for that is because it covalently bonds in layers leading to high melting and boiling points. So you, by layers I mean they form these sort of hexagonal layered planes and these planes as you can see there are only three bonds to every carbon atom. So you can see for this carbon atom here, there's one, two, three, which means that, of course, there's one bond left. And that free electron can be used to conduct electricity. So that's why it conducts electricity, whereas diamond doesn't. And because it has planes, there are weak dispersion forces between the layers, and that's what allows it layers to slide past each other. And that's how a pencil works. You have a pencil which is just stacks of these um, graphite molecules. And as you run your pencil across the page, these layers of carbon get left behind. And that's what we do when we write. Okay. So dispersion forces between layers allow them to slide over, making it quite soft in some directions. Now, it also is used as a lubricant for electrical motors because they can conduct electricity. And so 
Um, for those studying physics later on, you'll know you'll learn why we use graphite in our electrical motors. So each carbon atom share one of its valence electrons with each of its three neighboring atoms, like I just mentioned. But the fourth electron is what we call delocalized, which allows it to move freely, which means that it can conduct electricity up and down. Okay. Now the properties of diamond and graphite. So diamond has a very high melting point up past 3,500 Kelvin, and graphite is somewhere in the 3,900 or almost 4,000 Kelvin. Uh, sorry, degrees Celsius, not Kelvin. Um, the density. Uh, it's about 3.51 as opposed to 2.26 grams per centimeter cubed. So diamond is slightly more dense than graphite. The heat capacity, because diamond has such a low thermal, con uh, such a high thermal conductivity, it's got a very low heat capacity. So here graphite has a higher thermal uh, heat capacity because its thermal conductivity is just not that good. As you can see here, thermal conductivity is very high for diamond, even higher for graphite. Um, doesn't quite explain this, but that's okay. So we have 1,000 joules per second meter, joules per meter second Kelvin, and here 2,000, so almost double, or about actually exactly double. And the electrical conductivity is quite high compared to diamond. Um, so this is one semen per meter, whereas this is 10 to the minus, uh, sorry, 0.07 semens per meter where this is 10 to the minus 7. So as you can see, much, much higher electrical conductivity compared to diamond. Okay. So fullerenes. Fullerenes are the last type of allotrope of carbon. And they're spherical cages of carbon. So as you can see here, they're quite a cool looking structure. Um, they're sort of like that soccer ball, old soccer ball shape, you know, with the hexagons mixed with the pentagons. And the most stable one is having 60 carbons within the cage and they're called buckyballs. So each carbon is attached to three others with one delocalized electron. So similar to graphite, except instead of planes, we have these little ball structures. Um, it's soluble in non-polar substances and can be vaporized at moderate temperatures. So fullerenes are quite an interesting substance and they are starting to find use in industry. Okay, so that wraps up the theory today on carbon and its allotropes. So we learned what an allotrope was, and then we learned the three major. We learned about the three major types of allotropes of carbon: so diamond, graphite, and fullerenes. And so we'll move now to the question section, and hopefully you'll see, um, you'll ha you'll remember some of the things that we talked about in today's lesson. So first, which is not an allotrope of carbon? So we have diamond, of course, is an allotrope of carbon. Fullerenes, again, we know that this is an allotrope of carbon, and graphite which again we know is not, is also a allotrope of carbon. So what we're left with is methane. So methane contains carbon but also hydrogen, so it can't be an allotrope, so that must be the correct answer. Okay. Question two. Which physical property of diamond is true? So it is soft. No, we know it's the hardest substance we can find in nature. It can conduct electricity. Again, no, because it has no free electrons. So no electrical conductivity. It has a low thermal conductivity. No, it's got a very high thermal conductivity. It allows heat to pass through it very well because of all those bonds. And it is transparent. And yes, it is transparent because we can see through it. And so this is the physical property of diamond, which is true. Now define the term allotrope. So all we have to do is just tell us what, the, tell us what allotrope means. So allotropes are different forms of the same element in the same physical state. So remember, just different forms of the same element. And they're arranged differently, um, the atoms that are, that is, they're arranged differently. Um, and so they're formed in crystals or, or different molecular structures. And that's what makes allotropes different to one another. So if that's okay, we'll move to question 10. Describe the structure of fullerenes. So describe is our verb, and we always concentrate on what the verbs mean. And so describe is just sort of explained in brief terms. So fullerenes are spherical aggregates or cages of carbon atoms. So remembering that fullerene structure is simply just the sort of soccer ball shape of carbons. 
And the structure is similar to a hollow soccer ball, as I just mentioned. And each carbon is covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms, which um, gives you that spherical structure. And that's what a fullerene essentially is. Okay. So the last question is explain the structure of graphite. Explain how the structure of graphite, sorry, gives it its physical properties. Okay. So we look at explain and its cause and effect. Remember, always cause and effect. So graphite has a high melting and boiling point due to the covalent bonding between the carbon atoms within each layer of that um, graphite structure. It's soft, however, because only dispersion forces exist between layers, allowing the layers to slide past one another. And each carbon atom only is covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms, which leaves one electron to be delocalized and allow it to conduct electricity. So this wraps up today's lesson on, um, on carbon and its allotropes. And so we've learned about what an allotrope is and what the three major allotropes of carbon are. So hopefully you've learned something useful about this carbon and its allotropes and what they're used for. And I look forward to seeing you at the next lesson. Thank you.